Your eyes are closed. Your body is still. The mind is in a mood to relax. You are not trying to concentrate and make no effort to control your mind. Mother, can you see me now? Even when I Suddenly things start tumbling down Like fallen leaves But still I breathe Still I breathe Still I breathe In part one, I dove into the preliminaries of this big painting and adventure. I touched on what inspired me to take on this portrait, the prep and the start of the process, and how it's helped me trust myself along the way. Let's continue experimenting, learning the surprises and revelations of this journey and what it truly means. And so it continues. I like coming into my creative space with an intention. Whether it's to complete a certain section, try out something new, try something completely out of my comfort zone, or in this case, all of the above. Being conscious of those decisions and having the courage to do it is one big jump of its own. Our materials can often be of great help to completing our paintings. After connecting with some awesome artists during the YouTube collab, Greg Simpkins suggested a great mixture to slow down the drying time of acrylics and increase blending time, so I'm super eager to try out this new mixture and see how it can help this painting process. I also stocked up on these clear bottles to pre-mix my paint. I know taking that extra step will increase workflow and definitely improve functionality. By the end of this painting, I need to learn how to juggle. We're setting another goal. I remind myself to have fun during the process. Do whatever calls you, even if it's juggling for the first time. And lately through this self-exploration process, I've been experimenting with random silly things and trying to gain new skills. And I'm constantly reminding myself that we're in control of shaping and forming those things. I know I've mentioned that the underpainting will be in neutral tones, but I think I decided to keep the painting in these colors since they just made me feel super calming, so I think I'll be keeping the whole painting in the limited palette. I've been feeling very grounded and earthy, and well, it just feels right. 
And this color palette is pretty close to the one and only Matilda, so that's enough of a reason too, right? Who's a happy cat? Who's a happy cat? Who's that? The goal for this next few sessions was to complete the middle section, the area where the hand gently touched the vase. I really enjoyed working my way through very light glazes, super light transparent layers, and I have to say I was really pleased with the one-to-one -one mixture. I was slowly adding it to my paint, and I found it to work seamlessly with my process. It was truly an immediate adjustment and help. When beginning to work on the flowers, I played with the negative and positive shapes to set the shadows back and bring the flowers forward. And it was soon time for a recharge of energy. With each layer and each stroke, I wanted to keep the energy flowing by keeping things imperfect. I consciously tried to stay as loose as possible and kept playing around with fluid lines, transparency and variation, all while trying to keep the delicacy of these tulips. With the love for plants and nature in mind, Pila makes it so easy to show it. They make their phone cases out of plants, they're fully compostable, and I've been really enjoying this soft color palette lately. And check out this new flower case, it is so beautiful. I truly love working with Pila because they're B Corp certified and they're members of 1% for the planet. Not only are their cases super soft, you can choose to compost them in the convenience of your home, or you can send them to Pila so they can compost or recycle for you. I think that kitty case is next on my list. I really adore these cases, and Tilda does too. So if you want to grab some, Pila was kind enough to give us a code, which is Jess, 
And with that code, the first 50 subscribers will get 40% off. And after that, you can still get 25% off, which is still a great discount. If you're into waste-free stuff and love phone cases like I do, this may be a lovely option for you. Now let's roll right back into painting the flowers. Wasn't trying to get my numbers up You know I keep it cool I prefer to stay in the cut Don't want no attention on me When I'm trying to shake the blues up off me But then I saw your face It caused my heart to race Girl, you're looking like a million bucks Something about the way you strut your stuff oh, Girl, you're fine as you wanna What I'm supposed to do Something told me got a time to lose uh, Go ahead and bust the move uh. Funny thing about love When it comes and goes You never know So you gotta keep your heart exposed And you can be sure There's no cause and no cure And if it wants you uh, Oh, it'll come and find you I continue to add some flow into the hair, some more energy and splatters into the flowers all over. And I wanted to create this feeling of a breezy, soft flow of wind and little specks of energy magically overflowing. One thing I know about love You never know when it's coming but you show sure know it when it does, yeah. One thing I know about love. You might get what you ask for, so you better be sure it's what you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Slowly and surely, I began deepening the shadows, adding a bit more details in certain areas of the headphones, making sure all the proportions were there, adding even more expressive brush strokes and splatters, and then I moved my way down to the second hand. I'm still tackling the whole painting with acrylics, but I'm debating whether or not I should go in with more glazes and oil. I feel like I want to create even more softness in the hands and the face. Perhaps that's what we'll do in part three? have another idea of glazing in color to the areas where I have contact from my hands to the vase. Maybe add a little bit of saturation there, but I'm taking it slow and letting some ideas marinate while I get this initial sepia tone base completed. You might get what you ask for, so you better be sure. There comes a part in your painting where things start to slowly come together. I have to admit, it's quite satisfying and gives you instant gratification. And I did have tendencies to think about going into complete detail and rendering, but I really loved this sort of unfinished look that it was having. And you know, it really got me thinking that we're all on a journey, nothing is complete, everything is constantly changing, evolving, we're all trying to work on ourselves, improve ourselves. We're all trying to find out who we really are. And in a way, I really wanted that perfectly imperfect concept to show through in this painting. With the help of the brushstrokes, splashes, body language, and expression, I was pleased to see it all cohesively coming into fruition in terms of symbolism.
as I added water to my paint, and as I watched each drop flow down the panel ever so carefully, I knew I had absolutely no control of where it was going. But I was strangely content and trusted that it'll find its way. I didn't try to control it, and I didn't try to force it. Instead, I simply surrendered to the moment, let go of the thought of perfection, and just relied on what I felt then and there. And this brings me to something very important that I've been practicing lately, and it directly ties into the concept of the self-portrait. And what I've been working on is finding stillness and realizing how much magic lies behind it. When was the last time you sat with yourself, with your eyes closed, fully present? Well, for me, my days consisted of so many tasks I'm constantly, literally juggling many things at once. We all are, right? But I've been learning to find stillness, and it's been truly eye-opening for me. I found stillness through movement, I found stillness while I'm painting, and sometimes I feel the most stillness when I'm dancing. But how does that even make sense? Well, I think it's anything that makes you feel fully there, in that very moment. And for me, it's been a really nice way to sit with my own body and heart. The body language and position I chose for this painting is one where I feel all my five senses activated. And being aware of my five senses allows me to fully feel present. Although my eyes are closed, funny enough, it allows me to see things even more clearly. Though I'm not able to physically see, it's all there clear as day. You're then able to rely on the other senses. Music. Hearing music allows me to zone out completely. I tune out, I fly away, and I'm completely focused. With the flowers right beside my nose, I'm able to smell all the fresh scents that elevate and intense the feeling even more, yet keeping me calm as can be. Certain smells can invite certain memories, and that activates our taste buds, which shows us that everything is all connected. And speaking of connection, last but not least, touch. Holding these tulips in my hands fill me with safety, security, and immense amounts of unconditional love. They'll always bring me back to beauty and the soft, cozy texture the tulips have. I had to capture that feeling and infinite bond that we'll always share. The sun is setting, so I have a little bit of time left for today, and I just started making these random flowy, messy things up there, and I had this like calling to do it, and I felt like I should just stick with that feeling, so there's a lot of that going on with this painting, and I'm just like letting the flow reveal itself, and it's just, it's happening on its own, and I think that's beautiful, and that's just, Something I've been focusing on, it's nice to just go with it and go with the flow and have it grow on its own. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of the day.